Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. It's Tuesday, November the 22nd, 2011. And uh, tonight it is episode number 218 of Category 5 Technology TV. I'm so proud of myself. I got the date right, right off the bat. Did you get it wrong notice, last time? Yeah, two times in a row. Ah. You notice how I just like kind of like immediately went into the date. Mm-hmm. Just looked, to get it, get it out of the way. I looked at the calendar and then I signed on. Just That's like that. Good. Can't fail. Now, next challenge. And you are? I'm Eric Kidd. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. whoops. Oh, tonight we've done. got a lot going on, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. We have, uh, well, first of all, we are going to be taking a look at Linux Mint 12, the release candidate of their codename Lisa distribution of Linux. So stick around. That's going to be very, very cool. We're going to get a kind of a sneak peek of the upcoming uh, distribution of Linux. Also, we've got a brother multifunction center that we're going to be giving away. This week we uh, have been collecting ballots. The draw has already been held, uh, and uh, we are ready to announce the winner of that draw. Also, because it was a Canada-only kind of contest for the mm-hmm. printer, we decided they will get a get a hold of our contacts, and uh, and we pulled in two more pogo plugs that we're going to be giving away tonight. Holy smokes! To anyone in the world. So it's pretty much just like a Could giveaway you. show. It's pretty much a giveaway show. We might as well just get started and start giving you stuff. So uh, you know, here's. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you want that? You know. No one wants. I that. think it's pretty cool. No one really wants that. No one really wants it. No. I paid for it. Well, some... What are you saying? You know what I'm saying. (laughs) So much going on tonight, but hey, uh, I'm actually Robbie Ferguson. Hmm, I'm Krista Wells, and I have some fantabulous news for you guys. Let's have a look what's going on tonight. Uh, We will be revisiting the fact that Pogoplug is now offering free online cloud storage, which is compatible with their devices. Just in case for some reason you missed it last week. Hmm. Just in case. Just in case. I heard it was maybe a little inaudible. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Not that I have any experience with that. No. So. Mm-hmm. And the International Space Station crew returns safely to Earth. More than half of Android users are still using Froyo. Froyo? Which is a security nightmare. It sounds like one. Xbox Live Live reportedly has not been hacked, but its users are victims of phishing scams. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. I really, th- in hindsight, I should have written that in as Frodo. I, just that's, just that's so that we could demonstrate <laughs> your lack of, of geek knowledge. Uh-huh. I know who Frodo is. I'm aware. <laughs> She's like, I know who Frodo is. It has nothing to do with Android. Watch the But movies. she would have kept going. I probably would have. Yeah, that's kind of scary. I probably would have made fun of 2.2. 2. Yeah, definitely. You would have. Uh, now we're up to version 4 of Android OS, and hmm. people still running 2.2. Danger, Will Robinson. Uh, we have our mobile site live up and running. Go visit us there, cat5. Uh, mobile.cat5.tv. That's the other thing that i got to work on right there. Mm-hmm. I can look at the screen mm-hmm. just, like the, just like you down there. Mobile.cat5.tv. I'm so used to just scanning it with my, uh, with my mobile device. Just oh, scan that QR easy. code. Yeah. Easy like that. Scan that code with your QR reader. It will launch the mobile site. And, of course, if you're on there in uh, with an iPhone 4, 4S, or an iPod Touch 4, you'll be able to watch the show live tonight directly from your device. Very cool stuff. Um, so we've got a lot coming up tonight. Lots to cram in. We've got your viewer questions. And uh, we'll be right back after this. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point-of-view HD video camera directly into a high-quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high-octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high-definition video with a high-quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep-sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com this is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. Got that one, right? Uh, it's nice to have you here. And we do uh, we covet your uh, viewer testimonials, and we welcome you to visit our website, category5.tv, and send us a viewer testimonial. Um, 
so I've got uh, three that we uh, that we have to read here tonight. I'll kind of let you uh, bring those up as well. There's one from Swiss Andy that uh, that I'll get get you to have a look at. Sure. Uh, last week we didn't have time to read all of your testimonials, so I got one. Pardon me here from Penny, and cool deal. Penny has actually drawn a uh, a picture of my son Zach. Uh, dancing like a Vulcan. <laughs> I think that's so cute. So lifelike. Very cool. So that look at is his little uh, hip shaking. Okay. Look at them shaking. Yeah, he's got the moves <laughs> like a Vulcan for sure. If you don't know what that is in reference to, it's Cat Five TV slash Vulcan. Uh, so uh, from Penny, she says to all of Robbie's Cat Five TV crew. You have a wonderful blend of technology and interactive fun for all the viewers. My family is looking forward to the next generation of Groove Maestros. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life, Penny. (laughs) And that comes to us, of course, from Penny. If you you wouldn't mind scrolling down, there's one from Swiss Andy that I'll get you to have a a look at there that we weren't able to, uh, to read last week. One below that. There you go. Okay. It says, hello, Robbie and Cat5 Orchestra. Yay! Thank you for the viewer points and award, and for showing my voiceover contest video on episode 216. You have given me so much already with your show. I can honestly say it has changed my life during the last few years. Time for me to actively contribute when there's a chance. I'm coming from a DOS Windows background, reaching back to 1986, my first IBM compatible with MS-DOS 2.1. Wow. I'm working as a windows admin supporter at a local university. Before Cat5 testing, before Cat5 testing some older SUSE, SUSE distros. SUSE or SUSE? Yeah. Yeah, like mm. a, a version of Linux. Okay. Yeah. Hmm, they never did it for me. Due to the clumsy installation, the ugly looking desktop, problems with missing drivers and such. But then came Category 5. Here Robbie, we are. you really opened my windows. Ha. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and made me explore the world of Linux more seriously and successfully. Many of my machines at home on hardware and VirtualBox already run Linux. Mm. Travel netbook, download machine, office mail, PC, local PHP, MySQL, DevBox, and a storage server being planned. Plus, after more than a decade, I kind of fell in love with the command line again, this time not on DOS, but on Linux. I recently discovered many cool helpers like... Wigget, WGET. G- yes, curl and map, tiny proxy that I could even use at work. So after all, the Linux fanboys were right. Linux rocks. And so does Category 5. Thank you for making the difference. Happy yodels and greetings, hmm. Swiss Andy. That's very cool. Thanks for the uh, mm. for the viewer testimonial there, Swiss Andy. It sounds like we're really making a, an impact into helping users, and you'll be happy about this, but helping users migrate to Linux. I know this is your goal. In you life. can see my computer over there, right? Yeah. yeah okay. She's got a, a particular <laughs> laptop that we wouldn't allow on the set tonight. Hmm. Like <laughs> propped it up so I can see very it cool. at least. Very cool. Thank you very much, Swiss <laughs> Andy. I've got one here as well from Leland. And Leland says, I have seen this baby grow into a prime time production let's all get this in the classrooms i am uh, working on a development program to get new sponsors and to share some of the sponsors uh, from my other interests i foresee robbie's network becoming 24 7 with his help we could all upload through cat5 tv a multitude of tech talent let's all work together to get robbie financed you'd think i wrote this myself leland i'm kidding <laughs> Uh, Leland goes on to say, perhaps one of the next moves uh, is to find out who does or who can do what to make a growth plan. Robbie, what do you see, or where do you see Category 5 TV growing? And he says, and you better say to the opera, says, you're a good dude, perhaps after you stop by the bank. Well, hey, thanks for that little bit of uh, vote of confidence there, Leland. Um, And I'm very glad that you're enjoying the show and that you see potential in the show. Uh, Where do I see the show going? I think Krista knows, and and you know probably at home uh, as you're watching this, that uh, that the show is really about the viewers and the viewers uh, being you, the community. Uh, I I always want Category 5 to be uh, available. And by that, I mean, you, you, you notice, you know, we sometimes ask for donations, and that's important because your donations do help very, very much when it comes down to needing to pay the bills and needing to replace hardware and buy hardware and things like that. But 
we don't charge and we and our, the whole idea is that we never will charge the viewers for access to this content it's licensed under creative commons attribution it's free to download free to share free to mash up as long as you say it's from category 5.tv and uh, so my where I see category 5 going is just continuing to grow our viewership, continuing to get better and better. As you say, we try to uh, become as professional as possible uh, from our little studio up here in Barrie, Ontario, and, uh, and the goal is to make as good of a production for you uh, who, are, who are watching, but also make this a, a venue that advertisers would want to support so that we can continue to always provide this for you free of charge uh, with the, that exception of uh, welcoming your donations uh, to assist with, with uh, our, our financial needs, of course. Um, Leland goes on uh, with with quite a bit of uh, interesting information, uh, especially his connections with uh, with a, uh, Glenn Taylor uh, from CNN. Um, so you can read that in our viewer testimonials. Go to Category Five TV and click on Interact. You'll see the viewer testimonial section there. We would welcome you to submit your own, and uh, that would be fantastic. Thanks, Leland. Cheers. All right, we have a brother multifunction center printer. We welcomed some. Uh, we welcomed uh, Canadian uh, people to mm -hmm. uh, participate in our draw. As we were saying, uh, this is, comes to us from Brother Canada, and they're a fantastic company. Uh, you all know uh, who Brother is, and the fact that they make absolutely fantastic printers. We had Mark Ruel on our show last week to talk about uh, how they can be used to organize your office. And I am excited to be able to announce the winner of the contest, which was drawn this afternoon. Dun dun dun. dun 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 and a drum roll please is it sufficient the winner <laughs> that's fantastic the who says the brief description of my office is total chaos my home office is in a small irregularly shaped space which forces me to squeeze all of my required hardware that's three towers a printer a scanner all in one PC into all these odd spaces. So doing something as simple as getting a Brother multifunction center printer, which is all in one with the scanner, the fax, the printer, everything built in, is going to change two desktop footprints into one. So congratulations, our winner tonight Excellent. is Oberon. <laughs> congratulations, Oberon, and all I need you to do is email mailing address that's for shipping uh, as well as your phone number because the courier usually likes to have that on hand just in case they have any trouble finding you uh, email live at category 5.tv Oberon and congratulations for winning the brother multifunction center from brother Canada for more information about brother Canada visit their website brother.ca and make sure you also follow them on Twitter it's uh, at brother Canada Fantastic. We've got more prizes to give away tonight, and those uh, contests will, of course, be open to the world. Uh, so if you're watching from anywhere in the world, stick around. We're going to be giving away a couple of Pogo Plug devices and talking about what that can do for you and uh, to uh, leverage your own personal cloud. So stick around. We've got a couple of viewer questions, uh, indeed, that have come in this week, and I... Uh invite you to send in your questions live at category5.tv and I'll try to watch the chat room. Hey everybody, Smitty Smith, Agamotto, AS759, G Siegel, Garby, previously known as Gadwill. All right, we ready to All rock? Set? Yeah. Here, we're good. Okay. So, first question here is from Robert Sala. Says, first of all, congrats on your show. I recently switched it to 11.10 from 11.10. Sorry if I said 11.10. Yeah, it stands mm -hmm. for uh, 2010 or 2011. That's the 11. 10 is October. So the oh. release is from October of 2011. That's it. That so we see it's April of 2011. And learning. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I recently switched to Ubuntu 11.10 from Windows 7. I'm learning as much as possible because it is not 100% friendly user as is Windows OS. Installing some apps are not as straightforward as I thought they would be. However, thanks to your show, I was able to install Zimbra Desktop with ease. Following the line of Zimbra, I can, can I import my PST files, emails, calendars, contacts, to Zimbra? or perhaps exporting PST files to another format as to import them to Zimbra. Help please, thanks. Robert P.S. Robert. 
Not so strange. <laughs> Cheers, Robert. <laughs> Before I answer your question about Zimbra and importing your OS, uh, PST file, uh, I love our chat room who just said, the drum roll is on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? That was done intentionally because, you know, Krista just deserved that drum roll <laughs> all the way through her uh, her spiel. So hopefully we're able to hear everything. I think we oh, man, I shut oh, it man. off just before. <laughs> ah, well. I was not aware of this. Sorry about that, gang. The things that happen. Yes, the things that happen. We can't hear it, right? You can hear it. Thank you, chat room. Mm. So, Robert, uh, Zimbra, that's the word I was looking for. Mm. I got tongue-tied. Um, Zimbra has a, uh, a very cool uh, ability to import your PST file directly. As long as you've got uh, Microsoft Office 2003 or newer, um, you have to have it installed. Here's the kind of kicker, is you've got to be on the system that has Outlook so that you can do the import. Uh, and that's because... Uh, it's actually going to tap into some of the libraries that are included with your Microsoft Outlook product. So the thing to do is get onto the search engines. And I'm going to do a search for Zimbra um, Outlook, um, not connector. The connector is what is going to allow you to sync ongoing. It's the Outlook PST import wizard. And I'm just searching on Google here, and the second one that I see here, I've clicked on it, but um, here you go. Here's my results. Second one that I see, you see it's from wiki.zimbra.com. Zimbra Outlook PST Import Wizard Tips. Click on that. That gives you a little bit of information. The one that I'm actually wanting, the one that I, I want to find for you. Oh, now you know what? I think it's the first one that came up. Zimbra.com slash docs. Okay, is where it's found. Zimbra Collaborative Suite Import. Yeah, there we go. Here's the manual. So you start with downloading Import Wizard for Outlook Install Program, and then go through the step-by-step. -step. This So this actually shows you how to get it. You're going to go into your administrative console and go into the downloads area, etc., etc. I'll post links for you in the show notes of episode number 218, uh, but in the meantime, you can follow through with that search yourself. Uh, again, I used Google, and I typed in Zimbra, Outlook PST Import Wizard. And that tool is going to allow you to take that PST file on the computer that has at least Outlook 2003 and import it directly into your Zimbra account, which is very cool stuff. If you don't have access to a system that meets the specs for that, uh, or if you have any trouble, you can use IMAP. Um, if, you, if you have Outlook, you can set it up to synchronize by IMAP, but that's a pretty tedious. But that gives you another, another uh, search query if that's what's uh, what's necessary. Good luck. All right, Robert. Cheers. Thanks for the question. Excellent. On to our next question. It says, hi, Robbie and friends. Hey. I am using Banshee Music Player on GNOME Shell now. It looks good, but a bit inconvenient when it comes to updating metadata. The fingerprint lookup and update from Last.fm is useful, but it does not update album info for songs. My question is, is there a tool that allows me to select multiple songs and update the... the Update the some common info. Example, album album artist in batch. Well, like the uh, ID3 tags, kind of what you're saying, I guess. Okay. Sure. Is that it? Um, he has a second question. Okay. Um, is should, we, let's, should we address the first question? Sure. All you know, right. that would be logical, but... Okay. Logic. When, when are we logical? Never. Never. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. I'm going to bring up my computer. I'm going to go uh, System, Administration, Synaptic Package Manager. And in Synaptic Package Manager, because we'll use Synaptic if we want, and we're going to install a little tool that is going to allow us to edit the ID3 tags. So that's like your MP3 files or whatever. The tool that I would like to use, this is the one that I use, is called Easy Tag. Just like that. As a matter of fact, I even already have it installed. So let's bring it up. So you can install that tool and then go Applications, Sound and Video, Easy Tag. Easy Tag is exactly what you would expect from a program called Easy Tag. It's a way to easily tag your music. Uh, clever. Clever. <laughs> That's the kind of humor that you can expect from us here at Category 5 TV. <laughs> okay. Poor, poor Here I am. Fans. All right. Yeah. Okay. Music. Oh, I'm getting some kind of. There we go. I'm going to leave this not maximized. I've got a smaller screen, so 
that can be problematic. Okay, music. My band, okay? So here's, here's one of my CDs, which you can actually download um, off of my band's website. If you're really keen on it, I'll put a link in the show notes for 218. Basically, here are the songs. Okay, I've browsed to it in music and then Soul Cleansed CDs called No Matter. So what I want to do over here, I've got the ability to modify uh, any of the information. There's some information that's going to be static across the whole CD, right? Because this CD is a CD, so it's going to have the same artist, the same name, unless it's various artists or something like that. Um, so in my case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just click on any of the tracks, and I'm going to set the artist to what my band name was, Soul Cleansed. And then over here, see this button here? That's going to tag selected files. Okay, so there, what I want to do, I'm, I'm going to highlight the first one, go all the way to the last one. Pardon me, let's back up a second. I want to highlight all of them. Don't want to miss that step. Okay, now set the band name, and now click that button, okay? And that's going to set it for all of these. Set. We're not going to set the title of the song because it's going to be set from there. Album name, right? So you can go through doing it like that. Now, okay, set that for all of them. Now, no matter what one I go to, well, you'll see Soul Cleansed is set no matter which one it is. I didn't save it for album. I clicked on the wrong checkbox. But here's another thing that you can do here. This is kind of interesting because here's the manual way to do it, okay? So you can go through and you can set up all the ID3 parameters. Those are tags that show up in your player, for example. There's another way. There's this little tool up here at the top. Scan files. Okay, I'm going to click on that. And what I want to do is I want to have a general idea of the file structure of my CD. So each file falls into, if I go into music, check this out. I've got a folder called Soul Cleanse No Matter. That's the CD name. Here I've got the track names and numbers, okay? So, percent A is the artist, okay? So, it's going to be... Oh. <laughs> Zoom kind of throws me sometimes. Percent A is artist, so that's going to set it automatically to Soul Cleanse. Now, you see there's a dash there. That's because my file naming is with a dash. If that's a slash, then my... Let's see here. It's not going to set it up correctly. What this will do is artist, uh, a CD name, and then the slash, so that's a new folder. And you can play with this. N is number of the track, so that's in the file name. See, it's grabbing all this information from the file name. Percent %t is the title. And again, it's grabbing that information from the file name itself. Right? As soon as I mouse over, it's going to start playing. But So it's getting 0, 1. We'll be waiting, right? So now, if I activate that, Let's see. There we go. That's what happened. I accidentally clicked out when my zoom was in. Now you see what I'm talking about. If that's a slash, watch what happens to percent %b, right? Because it's, it's a dash in the file name. Now, there we go. Now, if I click that, watch this. It automatically filled in for that, for that particular track that was highlighted. CD name, etc., etc. Highlight all of them. Do the same thing. Now, each one has track name, as well as the track number, the CD name. Everything's there. So now save your your changes. Right. Uh, let's see. This one up here. Select all files and save. And do you want to do this? Repeat action for the rest of the files. Yes. Okay, so this is easy tag, really, really simple way to tag all of your files. Now it's saved, now it's done. Each file has the name of the track based on the file name, and you can add more information there. So hopefully that's exactly what you're looking for. Nice to have those ID3 tags in place. Helps you to set it up. A lot of MP3 players uh, rely on those uh, ID3 tags. And it's also nice for organizing your, your music files as well. So cool. Easy tag. Cool. And you said there was another There is. There's mark. a part two. Oh. Um, and he says, my second question is, is there any good equalizer for Ubuntu? And this is from Invincible Mutant. Oh, okay. Hey, now Invincible Now you know Mutant. who you're talking now to. Now I know. <laughs> I hope that helped you, my friend. Um, okay. 
so an equalizer. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the thing that we need to think about is that newer versions of Linux, and Ubuntu is no exception, are using Pulse Audio. Used to have Alsa or Jack or whatever or other things. So you'd use like the Alsa sound mixer or Jack sound mixer. In our case, uh, we're using um, Pulse Audio. So we need to find a, an equalizer for Pulse Audio because if you look at your settings here, very basic, right? Here's my sound settings. It works and it's and it's cool. Whoa! But there's no, you're right, there's no equalizer. So fortunately for us, there there was a tool that was manufactured and made, uh, Web Update published it on their repositories. It's no longer supported, it's no longer being actively maintained, but it is still available to us. So just bring up your, your web browser, uh, Invincible Mutant, and anyone else who is interested in adding this kind of functionality to your uh, to your Pulse Audio-based Linux machine. Uh, I'm going to do a search for Web Update with an 8, UPD8, uh, and it's called uh, System-Wide Pulse Audio Equalizer. It's an older one, but it works. And I will post the links. Here we go. This was posted back in April. I will post the links for you to this actual article. There's what it looks like. We're going to take a look. So what you need to do, it's this simple, Invincible Mutant. Highlight this code. Basically what it's going to do, it's going to add their repository. Okay. It's going to do an apt-get update, and then it's going to install Pulse Audio Equalizer. Highlight all that. Copy it to clipboard. Pardon me. Those are Linux terminal commands. So hop over to your terminal. Hit Edit Paste. Enter your password because it's super user do. And now I'll let her go. There we go. So now close that down and go applications, sound and video, and you'll see pulse audio equalizer. Let's bring that up. There we have it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back to my music. play one of my songs. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go EQ enabled. Okay? Apply settings. Now, play around. <laughs> really something. But essentially that's, you know, exactly what you would expect from an EQ. I would gather that that's pretty loud. So that EQ, as you can see, uh, has some presets. You can set it up however you like, apply the settings, and you're good to go. Invincible Mutant, I hope that's exactly what you're looking for. And uh, again, uh, the links will be in the show notes for episode number 218. Really improves the experience uh, of manipulating your audio directly in Linux. It's nice to have a software-driven EQ. Uh, certainly can be quite handy on your system. So check that out. Highly recommended as you're using Pulse Audio. And now time for you to take it away with the news here at Category Woo-hoo. 5. Yay! Alright. I have some fabulous stories for you guys. Uh, let's see. Alright, so here are the top stories in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Here's a story that brought out the giggles in Rachel. Last <laughs> week I heard, I didn't see it, but I heard it was quite, it was quite the pretty to-do. Giggly. I'll have to go back and watch it tonight. Yep. Everybody. So, here's what you may have missed. Pogo Plug, the remote access service that lets you connect to your hardware, was officially launched, has officially launched their, launched their own cloud. This is a free online storage service that offers users 5 gigabytes of space to store whatever data they'd like. Unlike Pogo Plug's remote access services, their cloud offering does not require any hardware components from the user. The service can augment products like the Pogo Plug device and Pogo Plug software for computers, but won't replace them. If users would like more than 5 gigabytes of cloud storage, then they can upgrade to paid accounts. 50 gigabytes of storage will go for $9.95 a month, while the 100 gigabytes will be $19.95 a month. But of course, users can also add their own Pogaplug device to add their own storage to the cloud using USB hard drives and a high-speed internet connection. Very cool. So, and, uh, and I'd like to mention, that's exactly the device that we're going to be giving away tonight. So stick around. We've mm. got two of those to, uh, to send your way. It's very convenient. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're awesome. The 
the last three, or sorry, not the last three, the three returning crew members of the International Space Station touched down safely last night, marking another success for Russia's Soyuz, Soyuz era spacecraft. Mm-hmm. Expedition 29 Commander Mike Fossum of NASA and flight engineers from both Japan and Russia landed on the central step of Kazakhstan at 2.26 a.m. after nearly six months in space. Fossum handed over command to NASA's Dan Burbank, the head of Expedition 30, who arrived at the International Space Station along with Anat and oh my goodness, Anatoly Ivanishin. You do this on purpose. I know you I do. do. <laughs> I do. And I, I, I must apologize to, uh, <laughs> to you. And <laughs> continuing on, Anton Shkaplerov of... <laughs> These are names, Ros- my friends. Roscosmos. <laughs> They're not funny names. I just I feel it's, horrible it's I can't pronounce them. <laughs> Canadians to work our way through oh. these words. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so very cool that uh, of, that they're uh, up there. Anyways, <laughs> of Roscosmos last week, also aboard a Soyuz Soyuz craft. The final three members of the current mission are scheduled to launch on December twenty first to dock with the space station in time for Christmas on December twenty third. It's Christmas mm. December twenty third. No, but that's when they are scheduled to oh, be there. Oh, it's a grammatical yeah, error. Oh well, I get it. Blame I get the, it. Blame in it time for Christmas, they'll be back December twenty third. On, no, they'll be on the space station. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I. That's what I read, and that's. You're gonna have to redo this story next week now too. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. By the time we get it right, they will be on the space station. Good. And Good. we'll be having Christmas. Yes. On December 23rd. Good. Okay. That's fine. Got it. It's fine for everyone. <laughs> so. The majority of Android smartphone users are walking around with insecure devices running out-of-date OS builds, leaving personal and business data at greater risk of attack. The latest figures from Google's Android developer website show that 44.4% of users have the latest version of Android, Android 2.3 or later, installed on their devices. A further 1.9% are running developer builds. That leaves 53.7% running older versions, the majority of which are running Android 2.2, which is Froyo. The issue here is that it means more than half of Android users are still susceptible to issues that have long been fixed or patched, such as Droid Dream malware, which allows hackers to root your phone. This is fixed. This was fixed in Android OS 2.3. Like any software, it's important to stay on top of your updates. Contact your phone vendor if you need help upgrading to a safer version of Android OS. Microsoft sources have denied a claim that Xbox Xbox Live has been hacked, stating instead that gamers said to have up to 100 pounds lifted from their accounts were victims of phishing scams. Allegations that cyber criminals have hacked into thousands of Xbox Live accounts to steal millions of pounds in the UK were made by the Sun newspaper based in London, England this morning. However, sources close to Microsoft insisted there is no evidence that any account has been hacked. But the source admitted that there has been an increase in attempts to gain punters' login credentials through deception, phishing. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash and Simple10 with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email us at newsroom at category5.tv for the category5.tv newsroom. I'm Krista Wells. Thanks, Krista. I actually receive mm. quite a few phishing scam emails in my inbox oh, yeah. on a regular basis. I think because so many people have me in their address book and people mm-hmm. get infected with viruses and these are not necessarily le- legitimately sent mm-hmm. out emails. A virus is actually sending out, in mm-hmm. a lot of cases, these emails that say, hey, click here. They pose as like uh, Microsoft or Hotmail or mm-hmm. MSN Live or whatever and say, well, you're, we're going to be disabling your account. Click here to... Yeah. Um, click here to uh, authenticate your account, and you go and it, and you click on the link, and, and unfortunately, the email looks very professional, very mm-hmm. legitimate. You click on the link, and you get to a website that looks exactly like the Hotmail login, or the Twitter login, or in this case, the Xbox mm-hmm. Live login. And so people enter their usernames and passwords. Yeah, and then they got you. They got you, Mm -hmm. because you're in a database, and guess what? They've got robots that go out there and change your passwords in an instant, or grab your credit card information, or whatever Mm -hmm. it takes. Uh, It happened recently. uh, Barry got hit pretty hard with uh, a Twitter worm that was uh, going out 
by direct messages to basically everyone in Barrie saying, click here, um, we saw a blog article about you, mm-hmm. um, is, this, is this picture of you? And you click on it, and it looks exactly like Twitter. And so what does everyone think? Oh, that's weird. Why do I have to log in to, mm-hmm. to see the picture? But they do anyways because they think that it's Twitter. You think it's trusted. And it had like a Twitler dot com website address so it looks at first glance so if you similar. don't look closely it looks very very much like it's legitimate so you got to be very very careful and i say this not to expand on a news story but just to to warn you that there are uh, risky things that are out there and people uh and we and and you need to understand that there are things other than viruses in our world today that uh, that we need to protect ourselves from because these days a lot of times it is unfortunately user mm-hmm. error that uh, that results in uh, data collection, our credit cards being uh, defrauded and, and people taking our money, our identities, and it can be very dangerous. So, uh, so be very wary of that. Be very careful. Watch out for phishing scams. Mm-hmm. Super Anti Spyware is a good piece of software to help you if you're on Windows. Super Anti Spyware.ca. Um, just one little recommendation for you. They used to be sponsors. They're not sponsors of the show right now, but it's, it is still good software, and I, and I recommend it. So. Tonight, we are going to be giving away a couple of pogo plugs, so do stick around. Uh, but we are looking at Linux Mint 12, codename Lisa. They have the release candidate that uh, was just released. And very cool stuff. Now, Linux, of course, is going through uh, quite a transition right now because the big players, Ubuntu uh, in particular, they're really pushing mm. to for everybody to switch up to GNOME 3. Linux Mint is, well, was originally based on uh, Ubuntu, and, and they've really held their own and, and put their foot down and said, well, we're, we're sticking with GNOME 2.3.2 uh, uh, back then uh, with their version 11 release. But there comes a point, I think, in, in any development cycle where here's the problem is that L- Linux users are really being pushed, and now even Linux Mint the developers are, are being pushed because if they stick with 2.32, the version of GNOME, which is basically the classic GNOME interface, the application menu up at the top or the bottom, and, and the traditional computer interface with a desktop and things, unlike the touchscreen interface of GNOME 3 or uh, Unity in Ubuntu's case. So their hands are now being pushed because if they don't switch up to GNOME 3, all of a sudden their operating system is going to stop working because it's no longer compatible with the Ubuntu repositories, which have basically said, you know, there is no, no more GNOME 2.32. <laughs> so here they're at a rock and a hard place because their developer, uh, Clem I believe his name is, is, is really, I get the impression that he's, he's a little like me in the way that he wants to hold on to the old school kind of desktop interface and doesn't like being pushed into this Unity GNOME 3. And so they've set out to do something a little differently. Let's log into Linux Mint 12, which is soon to be released. We're looking at the release candidate tonight, which, as they say in their blog, is, is still very young. And, and what you see here is not what's going to be in the full version exactly. They are really cleaning it up and really tweaking things, making it beautiful, making it functional. But one of the things that they've really set out to do with Linux Mint is to create a distribution that is what we as desktop users would expect from our computer, not a touchscreen interface necessarily, something that's a little more friendly and a little more familiar to us. So I've just installed the release candidate. Looks like it's coming up. There we go. Ding, ding. Now remember, out of, out of default, this is going to be running GNOME 3. Okay. Welcome to Linux Mint. What's unique about this version of Linux Mint is that they have introduced MGSE. That is their Mint GNOME Shell extension. And what that's designed to do is basically to bring uh, a, a GNOME 2.3 kind of feel into the GNOME 3.0 or 3.2 um, system. So you are running GNOME 3, but they've set it up so that it feels a little bit more like GNOME 2, which there's a big difference between the two, and you'll know as soon as you try it. So think of GNOME 2 as the start menu kind of interface, mm-hmm. right? Like, like Windows has got the start menu and, and all that, whereas GNOME 3 steps into the iOS kind of interface where it's all touch and it's all like big 
bold buttons and flipping screens and stuff like that. So there's got to be a happy medium, right? And that's what Linux Mint has set out to try to create for its users, is that happy medium so that we've got an interface that makes more sense to us. Cool. Unfortunately, it's taken, it's taken its time to load here. And we did have it up earlier, but I do s seem to have trouble with uh, Linux Mint when it's running in the uh, GNOME 3. So maybe what I'll do is I'll kick it into a hard reboot. You may have trouble, let me know if you're running by default, but I'm going to show you how to start up using uh, their the Mate desktop. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get to see MGSE. MGSE is in an, a very young state. Basically, what it does is it takes the GNOME 3, so you still have that kind of applications menu, but you're able to also have a little applications button at the bottom that gives you more like um, uh, a standard applications menu where you can actually uh, click point and click on the application that you want. Mate, on the other hand, is a young fork of, uh, of GNOME 2.3, and so it is set out to be a, a very uh, GNOME 2 friendly uh, or familiar interface. And it's looking very good. They are, it is admittedly young, but it's coming together. So what we're going to do is we're going to click up here, and we're going to go down to Mate. Now, Mate is included with Linux Mint if you download the DVD version of the distribution. And Mate, if we're lucky, is going to be quite a bit faster than what we just saw, which uh, was pretty much non-operational with uh, GNOME 3. There we go. See, look at that. I've got a taskbar down at the bottom. And that, people are a little skeptical about Mate. To me, right now, that looks really familiar. Almost, uh, dare I say, like that's that feels comfortable. So let's see what we can do to make this feel more like the desktop that I love, which is to right-click on my uh, my little taskbar, if you will, at the bottom here. And let's click on move. Oh, let's see. I'm going to go properties. Pardon me. See orientation. Let's pop that up to the top. I go close. Now my applications menu is at the top. Okay. Feels a little bit more Ubuntu esque as of the old days. But you'll notice that the clock is not in the middle, it's in the proper spot over at the right. I'm going to right click again on my panel and I'm going to go new panel. And it threw, threw a new panel down at the bottom here. I'm going to go Add to Panel. And let's add uh, whatever we want down there. You may want that to be where your applications or Windows, uh, window list is, right? So I could add it down there. There we go, right? And I can remove it from up here. So now my applications are going to show at the bottom. See that? Linux Mint with Mate, to me, feels pretty comfortable and, and looks very soft. I'm, I'm surprised that they've really um, reduced the amount of green. Linux Mint is notorious for having a very green operating system just based on their name and, and the theme that they went with, and, and I never really liked that about it. But here it's really starting to feel like it's got a very a darker, kind of softer theme on my eyes. It's, it's pretty easy. It is reasonably attractive. Uh, considering it is based on, uh, this is Mate, which is again based on GNOME 2.3 something, and it looks really good. Mate is meant to be fairly buggy right now at the start. I have not personally encountered much in the way of bugs. It seems to be fairly stable, even though this is a release candidate of Linux Mint. It seems that it works very, very well. just bringing up kind of the uh, applications that are included with it, LibreOffice. You'll notice as well that it does include um, GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is an alternative uh, for uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop. So that gives you the ability to modify your images and things like that. LibreOffice, the OpenOffice fork, as well as a couple of different media players to get you started. And everything that you would expect from your Linux distribution is here. It has a very good backup tool, which is called DejaDupe. And what's cool about DejaDupe and the fact that it's included with this distribution, I think, is that it, it's going to encourage you to 
set up a backup because watch how simple this is. Watch how easy it is to set up a back. Just show my backup settings. I'm going to go automatic backups on storage, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You might want to set it to an external drive or a different drive. How often do you want to back up weekly? How long do you want to keep your backups? Forever? At least a year? At least six months? Set it however you like, okay? And it's that easy to set up your backup. I mean, I set it up, I just turned it on, and now folders to backup is already set to home, my Robbie folder. And click on backup now. Enter my password. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remember my password because I want my, that's encrypting my backup, but I want it to always remember the, back, uh, the password so that it will automatically run the backup. There we go. Backup completed. And this is going to happen now every week. It's, it's done. My backup is already set. Now, of course, I'm saving my backup to my internal hard drive, so really that's only protecting me from uh, if I delete a file for example. That's not going to do anything for me if I have a hard drive crash. I saw a system came in uh, this week where they were backing up their data, but they were backing it up to the same hard drive that the data resided on. So the hard drive crashes, <laughs> and guess what? So be mindful. If you're going to be doing a backup, you need to get it onto a separate uh, destination. Network, computer, another computer in the house, another uh, backup drive, something along those lines. So out of the box, Linux Mint uh, didn't work for us using the GNOME 3 interface. Switching over to Mate, however, uh, is working fast, very zippy. You'll notice that it comes with Firefox, not Chrome. It comes with Pigeon Instant Messenger, not uh, that terrible uh, thing. I can't remember the name. <laughs> it, so it's got Pigeon. <laughs> It's good. Empathy is the one I'm thinking of. It's just terrible. Um, so this is nice to see. XChat comes pre-installed. Transmission BitTorrent client. Uh, Thunderbird for your email. So there's a, there's a fair suite of basic tools to get you started with your computer. And then again, system, administration, synaptic package manager is going to allow you to go through and install just like you're on any other Linux distribution. It's got a nice little interface for finding applications to install on your computer. Those are usually available for you free through Synaptic and you just click on them and click on install. Very good. Cosmetics looks pretty good. I'm going to try logging out and try attempt to log back in again as uh, uh, in the GNOME 3 environment to show you MGSE. Whether or not that's going to work for us, I don't know. First impressions? Um, Pretty zippy yeah. with Mate. Mate looks good to me. I've read it, I've read some mixed it, reviews. It looks pretty uh, like clean and everything. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty simple. Doesn't Obviously. look too hard to navigate throughout, anyways. Yeah, it feels more familiar. And you saw how customizable it was. It was easy for me to uh, to set up. It looks like MGSE is going to load a little bit better this time. It is slow compared to, obviously, uh, see how quickly you can change the performance of your computer just by say, uh, changing your desktop environment. Um, and this is probably to do with compositing, probably to do something with, uh, it could even be bugs, because this is a release candidate, so don't hold it against them too much, because we're basically looking at like a pre-release of the operating system, and they do expect that there are going to be a lot of things changed, a lot of things fixed up when the actual release takes place. So if I can get it to respond, mm -hmm. I haven't had much luck, honestly, with, uh, with MGSE. And some people are saying that it's really good. There we go. There's the GNOME 3 aspect of it. Okay. Now there's a menu down at the bottom that does load. It's not running very well, though, is it? So I'm going to say Linux Mint, if you go the Mate route, it seems to work really well. It seems to be zippy. It seems to look nice and work well. But then using the default inf interface, MGSE, which is their attempt to make it feel more like a traditional interface. But I think the fact that they included Mate in the DVD distribution is, is a plus one for the uh, developers over at Linux Mint, recognizing that, yeah, Mate may be young, but it's probably going to run uh, better on some systems, including the one that we're demoing on tonight. Um, so, you know, kudos to them for, for thinking about that. So if you have trouble running Linux Mint 12 with the default uh, GNOME interface, which is going to use MGSE, then definitely you're going, to, uh, you're going to want to try Mate and see how that goes. We're going to watch for updates as well uh, over the course of the next while and see how uh, Linux Mint 
with MGSE starts to perform, we're going to see fixes coming out to Mate, and nice that they are supporting that as well. Welcoming your con uh, your comments in the chat room, Category 5 on Freenode, or join us on our website, Category5.tv, and you can join us in the live chat room there. What's going on in the chat room? Anything at all? Oh, a little bit of discussion about Mint, it looks yeah. like. Hey, Madge Noon, Scott L. <laughs> Not a lot? No. Huh. Just, uh, just yeah, general conversations. Yeah, I'm using the Ubuntu 11.10 and like it. Yeah. Things like that. No problems with Mint 12 RC. You're not having any trouble? Who's that? It's from Garby. Garby. You're having some a good experience with MGSE? I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts about, about it and, and the way that they're going about it. I, I think, you know, good for them for working toward... And it's funny because they're really basically trying to make it so that GNOME 3 can feel and look more like an old version of the same thing. But GNOME 2 is just tried and true. It's stable. It's good. Uh, it's an interface that we can relate to. And uh, I the fact is, though, everything's pushing this way. Everything's pushing towards the GNOME 3 and Unity interfaces. And uh, it's a it's a changing time. It's a time of change for operating systems and hardware. As hardware becomes less powerful and operating systems become lighter weight, um, we're seeing you know you you see a, a tablet that's slower than another one, and yet for some reason is super zippy compared to that other one. It's all about the software now. It's an incredible time, I think. So, well, gang. Log into our website, category5.tv. Let's see what I have here. Oh! Couldn't be a pogo plug, could it? No, it's huh. two of them. Oh, goodness. Two pogo plugs. Pogo plug is a, a fabulous device. The pogo plug is going to allow you to basically create your own personal cloud. Go to our website, category5.tv, log in. You're going to see right on our front page there is a button for you to click race and you're going to have an opportunity to participate and to hopefully win one of these Pokeplug devices. We're giving away two of them to quick, uh, Click Race contestants right now. Category5.tv. Head on over to our website. We are watching for participants. Pokeplug uh, basically allows me to use my 8 gig iPod with 250 gigs of storage. Because I have a 250 gig mm -hmm. U USB hard drive, plugged into my Pogo Plug. Pogo Plug gives me access to that from any device anywhere in the world. And now, introducing the, uh, the new cloud, I'm able to leverage my device and set it up so that um, now my device also has storage outside in the Ubuntu, or in the uh, Pogo Plug cloud, mm -hmm. pardon me. So now I'm able to send stuff and, and save stuff and store it in my cloud without it using my own bandwidth too. So it's very cool stuff. So we've got Dave, JVSCC, Emil 1976, Smitty Smith, and Tordo, all ready for a click race. Good luck. Here they go. Oh my goodness, look at them go. Clicking away. Clicking Dave like is currently in the lead. JVSCC coming up uh, very close behind. Smitty Smith is, uh, oh, so close. <laughs> Smitty Smith looks like he's oh, about Dave to take over. Behind there. Almost. Mm -hmm. Click, Dave, click. Really? Click faster. Oh, JVSCC in second place still. Oh, and we just got another joiner, AS759, just got into the race. We've got a total of 900 clicks now, and still going. Unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Go, go, go. Tordo took over the lead with 280 clicks. How the half? I didn't even see him coming up there. Unbelievable. Smitty Smith close behind. Must be double clicking. We've got 1,500 clicks in total so far. <laughs> JVSCC still holding on to uh, second place. Dave has fallen behind oh, with 220 clicks. Dave has finger cramps. Oh, that's sad. Come on, Dave. Click, man. Click. Switch hands. JVSCC close behind with 430 clicks. Here we go for the winners of two Pogo Plugs. Just about there. Click, click, click. 
Tordo. What's going on with Dave? In the lead. Dave, He's man. He's decreasing. Dave He's probably lost his way. internet connection. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's coming up. With a vengeance. Look at that. With a vengeance. There he is. Yeah. Dave with 350 clicks almost. Coming up. Come on, Dave. Not much time left here, my friends. It's almost time to announce the winners. Tordo, JVSCC. We've got AS759 really just clicking away there. Smitty Smith has fallen into last place. Dave has taken over the second from last and working his way. And ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the click race. They still have time to take over. Come on, Dave. The winners of click race tonight for two Pogo plugs are JVSCC. Congratulations, you two. We're going to send you a Pogo Plug device. This is an amazing device. Uh, I think you're going to love it. It gives you an ability to store your files on an external hard drive from any device and access them. Stream them to your, your mobile devices, stream them to your computer, however you want to do it, and share them with family and friends. Uh, recently, uh, my wife and I, we set up a, a video and we shared it directly from this uh, with family and friends, and it's just an amazing device. So uh, email us, Tordo, JVSCC, with your mailing, shipping address, and phone number live at category5.tv, and we can't wait to send that off to you. Uh, make sure you include uh, your phone number for the courier. Cheers, Tordo, JVSCC. Congratulations on uh, winning Click Race. Just to mention that Tordo actually clicked 1,093 times. Oh, my goodness. You must have been stretching beforehand. Just, just about, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to win this. JVSCC close in behind with 849 clicks. Congratulations, you two. Very cool stuff. Chat room, it's been fun tonight. <laughs> Tordo in the chat room says, uh, I, I broke my mouse. Oh, I need no. a new mouse. Well, hey, you were going to buy a pogo plug anyway, so take that and, uh, and go buy yourself a nice, nice new mouse. One with rapid fire. <laughs> 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 Remember rapid fire? On the Nintendo controllers, you could buy a special controller that had, like, a switch. You hold in the A button. It was the laziest thing. It's like you're playing Contra, and, you know, the other guy next to you is going, ding, 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 ding. You're just holding it in. It's cheating. It's totally cheating. And I also had a, a Game Genie mm. take you way back. Mm -hmm. Penny, <laughs> Penny, <laughs> Penny has me thinking about 8-bit <laughs> graphics. See how that works, Penny? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> G Seagull's with me. They understand. They remember. Yeah. Game G. Wow. Hmm. Good times. Well, hey, tonight's show is brought to you, uh, has been brought to you by Garden Gate Farms. You'll find them at GardenGateFarms.com. They have certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice. Good stuff. Build your immunity. Check them out, GardenGateFarms.com. Also, Cat5.tv slash Calypso, and you can download the free online game there. And, of course... The dreamy device that we just gave away, <laughs> cat5.tv slash pogoplug. Go to that website and learn all about the device that you just won. And uh, we, uh, we uh, thank them for their involvement in the show, cat5.tv slash pogoplug. Hope you had fun tonight. Of course. How did that hour just go like that? Where oh, they always go? just seem to zip by. I know. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Hey, everybody in the chat room. Cool. So, uh, yeah, next week, uh, make sure you're here if you have young kids. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking about um, cyberbullying, a oh, very important topic, topic that, uh, that needs to be addressed. Um, I'd encourage you, uh, you know, get your, get your family together, get your, your uh, husband, wife in the room, your, your spouse or, or uh, whoever's with you to, to sit down and, and learn from the show. We're going to have a very special guest uh, who is, in fact, uh, whose uh, child was a victim of cyberbullying. And we're going to be speaking about the, uh, the charitable organization that she founded in order to, uh, to help make people aware of the, uh, of the issues that, uh, that do exist uh, with Facebook and, uh, and mm -hmm. profiles and the bullying that takes place. 
Um, so I, I'd encourage you to join us, especially if you're a parent next week. Uh, if you're a young person who is experiencing, uh, you know, at the receiving end of cyberbullying, I'd encourage you to check it out. Also, if you uh, perhaps have said some things to somebody online that maybe you would like to take back, uh, it's a good opportunity for you to learn about uh, the impact of the things that you say uh, in your, si in your uh, social profiles. So definitely uh, is going to be a great show next week, and uh, we'll love to have you here. Krista, it's been nice having you here this week. Oh, it's great to be here, yeah. like, you know, once every You look so year. tall with a hat on. It's That's like why a, I did it. I'm going to sit back like this so that I look like a, so I look like a munchkin, and you just look like a... I look enormous It's like depth now, perception <laughs> of the camera. I'll just sit back there. Yeah. yeah it's fine. Just Hillary's on out. next week. Yeah, just mentioned in the chat room there. Garby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great having you here. Yeah. So yeah. I'll see you all in, like, a month. Is it that long? So, like, right before Christmas. Right before Christmas. Probably have stuff to give away. Oh, no way. No I way. I hope so. That's the coolest. Hope you had fun this <laughs> week, everybody. And uh, I sure did. Nice having you here. And uh, see you on our website, category5.tv. Don't forget to drop us an email, live at category5.tv. See you next week. See you guys. <laughs>